What's going on, Reef Builders? I'm Jake Adams, and I couldn't be any more excited to bring you another awesome video, this time from inside the Mangrove Lagoon Aquarium here at the Worldwide Coral Superstore. There's so much beautiful eye candy. Just had to get inside to give you a close-up, intimate look at all the awesome corals inside. So we're gonna take a uh, closer look at all the different uh, neighborhoods of corals inside this tank. So let's get started. Right as I started rolling, the Vlamini Tang started nipping at my toes, like literally nipping at my toes. But here we are inside this tank. It's 1,200 gallons. It appears to be about a 10 foot pentagon. And the growth inside this tank is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal in just one year. I have to look very carefully where I step, but you can see that the main focus of this tank is these radiating arches, these fingers, these tendrils that are absolutely covered with a wide variety of corals. And there's Mr. Vlamingi. Say hi to my toes again. Don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> I'll take that over the clown tang. Give me a piece of his tail. But uh, but yeah, there's, I don't know, maybe a thousand corals in here. Not at all exaggerating. And part of the showpiece of this tank is a big, nice, grown out mangrove tree here at the back that has some beautiful roots. Man, I cannot wait until my tanks get, my, uh, my trees get that many prop roots to support it. Everything in here is so freaking luscious, and I just love how how this tank is maintained because it's very, very simple. Oh man, this is some of the dodgiest filming I've ever done. <laughs> We're gonna take a closer look here at these different areas. So, I've been mentioning the Worldwide Corals uh, kind of signature aquascaping move is these tendrils right here. This is an awesome, awesome way to maximize how many places you can actually put corals on. Because you can put some bright light corals on the top, some medium light corals on the sides, some lower light corals underneath. And uh, just to prove to you, I am in this tank. I very much am inside this aquarium. Wow, there's so much coral here. I don't even know where to start. So uh, let me just confess that uh, the idea of getting in the tank is a whole lot easier than being inside the aquarium. Well, I, because I'm tall, I have to you know, I have to squat a little bit, but it's probably about six feet of space between the ground and the the light platform. Tall people problems. <laughs> tall people problems. So um, all of these lights um, last year. They were all Radeon Gen 4s, uh, Gen 4 Pros, but I think they've switched them out to Radeon Gen 5 or Gen 4, Gen 5 Blues. Uh, can't make it dim enough for you to see it, but it's really important for a tank uh, as broad as this to get as much light as possible. So we've got, it looks like about a dozen Radeons, Gen 5s. Here's an MP60 over there in the corner. You can barely see it. We've turned off the, all the flow again, naturally for this kind of uh, in-tank presentation. But uh, from this point of view, you can really see and appreciate what I'm calling to call the uh, signature tendrils, the fingers of Reefscape that uh, is common across many different aquascapes here at Worldwide Corals. And uh, so enough of the overview. We're gonna take a closer look at some of the nicer corals in here. All right. So as I'm squatting here in the tank, I'm trying not to shade the corals at the same time. There's a beautiful, classic, gold tip Australian elegance coral. Probably came from the west coast of Australia. Got that neon green catalophilia to support it. A uh, flesh colored bubble coral. There's a, I think this is mine. I think this is the shroom I collected in Solomon Islands right there with those green tips. I remember getting a, one piece over to these guys and it was in their front show tank for a while. A couple of nice orange frog spawn. Oh man, I just, I'm so tempted to just get in. But this camera is not waterproof. So we've got a nice pink tentacle, flower pot coral right there. And uh, there's a little, 
population of red Rodactus that's starting to to split off and just kind of you know just kind of muse on over wherever it wants to go. What else we got? Very nice orange Cordia Florida here. All all of the water surface disturbance is for me. Ooh, there's one of those pieces of the uh, tangerine orange Symphilia Wilson eye that I love so much. What else we got back here? That's the uh, the green branching cap, the Montipora equituberculata, like a 20 year old strain of uh, Montipora. What else is in here? This is one of those beautiful, hard to name pink mycetium strains with green mouths. Ooh, look at that sun sun polyp right there. You know what? I've uh, I talked smack about sun corals or sun polyps. No, sorry, I talk smack about zoanthus sometimes, but this is one strain that I just always, always freaking love. The sun polyps are awesome. A little bit of a rainbow gani right there. There's the reverse stem green hammer next to some frog spawn. And I think this is the Franken bounce or the Neptune bounce. Franken? Yeah, I thought that was a Franken bounce. That is the biggest one I've ever seen. That is my girlfriend's favorite coral. She is dying for me to get her one, but I've never seen one that big. It's like it's like folded in on itself. It's yeah. I mean, if it had a room to spread out, it would be very very massive. Like, all right. So I got to move super slow so I don't make it cloudy and I don't disturb the surface and uh, you know this is kind of cool this is a, this is one of those things that uh, I mean worldwide corals was already on a trajectory to make its own name but the uh, the OG bounce mushroom I remember seeing this thing in their front tank and Casper's little biotope and uh, it was just a noddity it was just something that everybody loved but now it's just so iconic just like Casper Got a little bit more Ghani. I don't think, I don't know if I'm brave enough to go uh, that far <laughs> into the tank. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to stay here a little bit closer to the edge where it's, uh, where it's safer. I'm gonna reposition myself. Like I said, the uh, the idea of getting inside this tank. Now you see why I wanna pool next, right, Jake? <laughs> yeah. Get ready, guys. Little, building for work, a little pool. pool reef. 50,000 gallon pool and I'm not kidding. All right, so he's never kidding. <laughs> that guy's never kidding. <laughs> so this is one of the most underrated goniopores right here. This is the blue tenuidens. It doesn't look really popping under blue lighting, but it's so freaking hardy. And the uh, the flamingi came back to say hi. We've got some nice little ch chunk of green slimer that's grown really well in one year. Nice interstellar. Sh Little interstellar shroom here in the middle. There's the original super holy grail. So in this in this video, it might look like a regular kind of green torch coral, but I assure you, it's anything but. That thing is just sensational. Right next to a uh, a prism. That's the typical green. So that's the typical green. You'll find that at your local fish store, 70, 80 bucks a head. This is the holy, holy grail. Very gold with a green stripe down each end. Um, if you if you if you get that coral, you'll know it because your wallet will feel it. And uh, there's a coral I need to add to my collection. Nice little. Oh, come on, focus on that. There we go. Come on. Nice, nice branching gold hammer coral. I have one that's kind of peachy, but I need to add that one. Now, what the hell is that? What is this? What is this orange Rodactus with the, with the green bounces? What is that? I don't know. Just a new one? Yeah, it's been, I bought it like a year ago and it just had a little tiny thing I saw potential in. Now it's starting to bounce. Starting to bounce. Bounce, baby, bounce. I've only seen that once in, in the wild, one time. And it was a big colony of Rhodactus. Part of it was shaded and it looked normal. And then the other part was in the sun and it started looking crazy. Oh, now here's something you cannot see from the outside. You have to, you can always put your hand on top, Jay. Oh, right. Like, you know, not from, just the bounce, you know what I mean? Yep. So earlier in one of the other tanks, I showed you a nice orange hammer coral with some green tentacles and now we have the opposite it's a green hammer 
with some orange tentacles. Now that's crazy, man. Did you buy it like that or did you just start doing it? There's my old friend, the Colorado Sunburst back in the corner. Holy crap, man, just being back here and seeing all this stuff is awesome. Un unbelievable. It's so fun. Everybody gets to see that back there so far. It's so cool. And look at those mangrove roots, man. They're just multiplying and just going all the way inside. You got Space Invader in timeout, <laughs> like they should be, because they will nuke <laughs> everything nearby. Hey, now that we're close, here's a, a nice mangrove tree. I'm sure Julian grew it out at first. That thing has gotten really dense and bushy. It's got a little bit of moisture on it because, uh, you know, it pays to, uh, to spray down your mangrove. All right, let me see if I can carefully turn around. It's getting hot in here. Woo. Carefully. One false step. <laughs> funny, not funny. All right. Man, the forest fires, it's, it's living up to the name. And just so you know, I'm still in this tank. There's my foot. There's, there's something I've been, I think that's been missing from my observation of corals here at Worldwide Corals is a rainbow style gardiapora with those beautiful yellow orange tentacles. When, uh, when Victor visited my place, the four rainbows I had weren't uh, really uh, showing their full potential, but now they are. So I'm pretty sure next time he comes over, he's gonna want a piece of that. And there's something that never gets old right there. A super awesome hammer coral bombing. Look at that thing. Whoa, my foot just slid a little bit underneath the sand. Whew, careful, careful. Don't, don't fall, don't drop the camera. I think I just got stung by a torch coral on the back of my calf. <laughs> Doing the crab. <laughs> wow, man. We've got a nice little, didn't even see it when I was over there, a classic bonsai acro. That's, that's the awesomest of all acros, man. If you haven't ever grown a bonsai, up, you really have to. You really have to do it. What else do we have in here? Man, the diversity in here is just really off the hook. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. oh yeah, sketchy AF. <laughs> All right. The home stretch here in the lagoon. A few things I definitely want to point out. One coral that we would love a lot more if it didn't grow like freaking crazy. Does he kind of pour it here? That's why it's off in the corner because in no time a two inch frag will just turn into a three foot colony that will just totally overtake your tank. And oh, I just got kissed by the cleaner ass. <laughs> what else we have going on in here? We got a couple Duncans. Now this Duncan right here underneath the flow, the bright green mouths, Victor's promised me a piece of that. That's just so cool. Like when I saw it at first from across the way before I got in the tank, I just thought it was some kind of euphilia. But uh, no, it's actually a really interesting strain of Duncan. And Duncan can be very highly variable if you pay attention to the different varieties. And uh, what else do we have in here? This, this is a showstopper. You cannot look at this tank without noticing this giant rhodactus. I mean, it is straight up 10 inches across, like without even, without question. That's a three inch jawbreaker right above it. And this is a ginormous rhodactus. That thing is sensational. Now the only flip side to a, to a rhodactus getting that big is it's not reproducing. So you have one giant potential fish eating anemone. So yeah, man, this is a really awesome tank. It's come along so well. Let me show you these, uh, my foot right next to this mycelium. I'm sorry for the uh, disturbances on the surface. Incredible, incredible. You know what, I think next time, next time I come here and get in the tank, I'm gonna have a swimsuit and I'm gonna bring my housing so the camera can go underwater. And then I can just kneel and I don't have to, uh, 
that I'll have to navigate this. Oh my God, it's gonna be so nerve wracking for everybody that has to get in here for any kind of management. One of the guys who uh, works on this tank was telling me he pulls out like one bucket, a bucket of corals out every single week. So they're already harvesting from this awesome tank. And um, if you follow uh, the uh, Worldwide Corals Instagram, you'll recognize this three peat Symphilia Wilson eye. I think they got a little stung on one side, so they cut it in half. So there's actually a Siamese twin of this, the three pack of Wilson eye in the back. Looks exactly like that. Looks like the mirror image. Tucked back here. The gorgeous. I'm pretty sure this is a Florida Recordia. They said it was a Yuma, but I'm not so sure. And this one, it doesn't have orange color. It doesn't have pink color. It's got some weird, weird red coloration with big red vesicles. Awesome, awesome, awesome tank. So believe it or not, the filtration for the mangrove lagoon is uh, is mostly under here. There's just a, I mean, there's nothing happening back here, right? It's just a big open sump. Just a nice big flat open sump. We've got some primary mechanical filtration here with just a little bit of poly filter that I assume gets cleaned up periodically. This is the uh, biological, which uh, I'm sorry, but I find a little bit laughable because this is a fraction of the rock and corals and sand inside the primary tank. This, this is uh, this whole very shallow flat sump probably holds, I'm guessing somewhere around 100 gallons, 125 gallons. And then we have a large external return pump that feeds partially to the tank, but partially also to the, uh, the only real filtration elements of this aquarium. So most of the filtration for the mangrove lagoon is actually right up here in this little bird perch. Guess what, what would you call that? A little bird's nest? So besides that long flat sump, which we saw is that, that's just a, just a water handling system. This is where the business happens. This is where the action really goes down for that mangrove lagoon. The primary element here for mineral replenishment is an oversized large geocalcium reactor. There's a uh, pinpoint pH controller that uh, controls pH, keeps it nice and low down inside. And there's a uh, carbodoser, which is an interesting solenoid uh, valve site device that meters out uh, bubbles in uh, singular increments. And then there's a calc stirrer right there that's fed by the Camor dosing pump. And uh, the big conical uh, reef octopus protein skimmer is not running. So very surprising to see actually many of the systems here at Worldwide Corals, eh, protein skimmers just happens to be off or turned real low because you're trying to keep those nutrients up. And something a little bit more uh, different is a big stack of ultraviolet UV sterilizers. Um, that's one way to keep it super clear. And uh, there's the power supplies for each of the ultraviolet lamps. So no controllers, no actual multi-part dosing. So by comparison, this makes my systems look uh, a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna have to rethink some of the things that I do on my tank, but uh, this is what runs the mangrove tank. So let's go back and take a look at it.